Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna talk about how to create a comprehensive marketing plan for local businesses. So if you have a business that you're trying to grow and you rely on traffic from people coming in around you to be your customers and your clients, this is gonna be really, really helpful. So if you're a service business or you're a restaurant or a coffee shop or a bar or anything like that where you are trying to target people in an immediate vicinity of your business, this is gonna be a really, really helpful video. Hey there everybody, my name is Brandon Brashears and I create daily digital marketing videos here. So if you're trying to grow your brand or your business with digital marketing, please consider subscribing here. If you enjoy the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you need any additional help, be sure to comment below. Or if you're looking for more help for your local business, you can click on the website down below as well, maverickdigitalmarketing.com. And I help businesses do exactly this, get more clients and customers. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So if you have a local business, and it doesn't matter if it's a service business or a retail or a restaurant, you need people who are in the immediate area around you to come into your business. So this is different than like a traditional e-commerce business where you have clients and customers all over the world. You know, things like Amazon sell to everybody. It's not just based on local area. So that is different for you. You have different needs than a business that can do business with anybody around the world. There's pros and cons to that for sure, but it's ultimately you need people who are close by your business so that they can do business with you. So the first thing that you really need to do is you need to identify who is your ideal customer, what are their demographics, what are their psychographics, what is it that makes them tick? What are they worried about? What are their fears? What are their worries? What is the motivation behind coming to your business? Now, if you're a restaurant, you could just say, well, they want good food, or if you're a coffee shop, they want good coffee but there's always alternatives to your brand or your business. If you're in charge of your marketing for your local business, chances are you're not part of a national chain, right? So if you have a sandwich shop, for example, somebody who goes to your sandwich shop is probably very different than somebody who wants to go to Subway. You have to think about what makes your business unique and what are the different points that you can sell. You know, having a local business, being somebody who lives in the area that supports local, there's a lot of people that want to support local businesses. And so finding out who those groups of people are and really getting clear on who your ideal client is, not just everybody, right? If we're gonna do advertising to try to attract customers and clients, you don't want just anybody. You wanna be paying to get the best potential clients in there. So we're gonna talk about a few things that you need to do to make sure that your business is attracting the right kinds of customers and also can getting you a consistent way to attract customers so that your business grows. So since there's a ton of potential local businesses, I'm just gonna cover coffee shops today because I love coffee and I think it's an easy example that you can take and apply to your own business. So let's say you have a coffee shop. If you don't, you know, put your business in, plumber or whatever. But if you have a coffee shop, let's pretend that you do, and you're trying to get new customers and new clients to come to your coffee shop. There's several ways that you can do this local marketing. Let's talk about this kind of formula that I like to use for local marketing. I think that every single local business needs to be doing Google AdWords, they need to be doing Facebook ads, which includes Instagram ads, and then they need to have some kind of a video and content production so that people can really get a, a feeling for what you're all about, what makes you different, and help you to connect with the business before even getting there. So let's start with Google. Google's very straightforward because um, it's not simple. There's a lot of complexity to Google Ads. Number one, don't use Google AdWords Express. Don't use Google Smart Ads. Those are very wasteful in that they give you a lot of impressions and clicks and things, but they're very low quality. So make sure you're not doing AdWords Express. I actually created a video about that. Why Google AdWords Express sucks. You shouldn't be using it. So don't fall into that trap. That's very, very important. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to find people that have certain intent in their searches. So people are looking for a coffee shop near me or people that are looking for um, great coffee with Wi-Fi or there's a bunch of different search terms that people are doing that they're actively looking for a business or a service or a product. You need to be targeting those bottom of funnel in search intents so that you can be converting that traffic into actual customers. So I think that that's very, very important, number one. So that's just the paid ad side. You also have the Google My Business listing. You can do Google My Business posts. You need to have your map listing set up properly. And all of that needs to be set up and optimized so that if somebody searches for your brand or your business, they're going to be able to find them on Google and Yahoo and other search engines. I talk mostly about Google because their ad platform is fantastic and it's just the most popular ad 
that search network that that's out there. So if you want to do Google and Yahoo and Bing and other search engines as well, that makes sense. Um, but you know, specifically for this example, we're talking about Google because it's the powerhouse, obviously. So if you're trying to attract new customers, I think number one, you have to get clear about the customer that you're trying to attract. You have to figure out what's important to them. And then we need to get some kind of an irresistible offer out in front of them. So, you know, for example, if you wanted to do if you're a coffee shop, maybe the first cup is free, or you could have a loyalty program or a rewards program, something that's going to entice them to come in. Um, I think that if you have a coffee shop, especially if you're a smaller coffee shop, and you have a lot of those kind of coffee shops have like ceramic mugs that are reusable. If you gave people free coffee, if they came in and spent time in your coffee shop, that would let them get to know the place. It would uh, hopefully help have them bring friends and family and spend time in your business. So you could make specials, you know, around that. How do we drive people into your business so that they get used to it? They understand what you're about. They understand what the feeling is. What are the benefits of you over your competitors? And how can we make them spend more time engaged with your business? So I think that if you can somehow build an offer that gets them in the door, that's immediately valuable to them, that they understand, hey, I'm gonna get this thing free, it gives good reciprocity. Um, and when you're doing offers like this, I think that it's very, very important that you frame it in terms of, you know, if we're going to give this to you for free, it's because we want to earn your business. We want to show you why we're different. We want to show you why we're better. We're going to prove it to you. We're going to put our money where our mouth is. People like rooting for the underdogs. It's in every single, almost every single movie, right? It's not about the rich person who gets richer and richer and, and goes after the poor people, right? It's about the, the poor guy who's going up against the rich guy. And there's always that battle and that, that conflict there. So giving people, you know, hey, we're going to earn your business. Let us earn it. Let us, you know, root for us. We're the underdog because we're the small guy. We're going up against that huge national company and um, we have less resources, but you know what? We make up for it in customer service and quality. We'll know your name. Every time you come in, we're going to know what your drink order is, right? That kind of detail that separates you from the big faceless companies that are nationwide. And that leads me into the third part, which is video creation. I think that video is so, so important. If you have videos that you're making on a regular basis, it doesn't have to be with a fancy camera. It can be with a cell phone, or you know, if you're on Instagram doing stories and behind the scenes, showing people why you're different and why you're unique. You know, trying to be an ultra professional corporation and you know, having no emotion or no interests or no context, it just makes you very boring. If you're you know, competing against Starbucks, what makes you different than Starbucks? Who are the people that are there working? What makes those people interesting? What do those people care about? You know, are they super into, you know, Avengers Endgame? Are they going to be like staying up all night and going to the premiere? Like what kind of things are going on where your customers can connect with these people? Um, one of the first social media marketing gigs that I had was doing social media for a bike shop. And, you know, including the personality and the things that are happening with the, the people that do the bike shop repair and people that are the salespeople, just what's going on. And people would watch that and see and mention it when they would come in. They'd be like, oh, hey, how's this going? Or how's such, you know, this person doing? Really inject your personality as much as possible because you don't have the huge budget for a creative department to continually put out new content and work on it. And so you're going to have to be different. And so it's going to feel maybe a little bit uncomfortable, but you need to be super authentic. And I know that gets thrown around a ton, but really what makes you different? What are you interested in? What kind of people are you like and trying to attract? If you think about your friends that you interact with on a daily basis, they like the same things that you do. So if you're able to add customers who are basically like your good friends, it makes a lot of sense that you're going to be able to, you know, grow your business in a way that creates customers that you like spending time with, that you like serving, and it's going to help you in general. So I say that video is very important it's because every single platform that you can be advertising on, so Facebook, Instagram, and Google, especially with retargeting ads and remarketing ads, it's going to just be super helpful to get people to give context into what's your business like, what are the people like that work at your business, what are your products and service like, and what's in it for that customer. When you make content, it needs to be not only about you know your personality and, and things too, but it needs to be what's in it for the customer, what makes you different. What does it say about the customer when they come into your business? 
people do things for status. You know, Starbucks is convenient, so why should they come to an alternative where there's no drive through You know, what does it say about the person who's coming into your business when they come into your business versus a Starbucks? How can you make these people feel special? How can you elevate their status? How can you help them to identify what values you have so that if they have the same values, they can then use you instead of Starbucks. A lot of people, you know, are against Starbucks just because they're a big corporation. And so if you went after people who are, you know, more about promoting local and being all about, you know, serve, helping local jobs, local business and things like that, there's people who, you know, take pride in that. So find the people that are going to be your ideal customers, your ideal clients, and really spend time working with them. So the whole strategy needs to be cohesive though. Each part of the strategy does something. And the specific job of each strategy and each part of the strategy is gonna be measured differently. So for example, when you have your Google AdWords that are targeting these transactional searches that are happening, and you gotta think about what are the things that people are searching for in your area to come into your business. But the way that you're gonna measure success with that is gonna be click-through rate and then cost per conversion. So how many people that are clicking through are converting? That being said, you need to have some kind of an offer set up or you need to have a way to measure and manage that. Google Tag Manager is a great way to do that. It's not perfect though, unless you have a specific offer that you're sending people to. So if you're a coffee shop and you send people to a landing page that says, hey, get this free coffee, you know, text, you'll get a text code. You can have people opt into it and then text them a code. That's really helpful because it tells you how many actions happened and then how many people came in and redeemed that code. So things like that that are measurable help you to identify what is the cost per action, cost per customer, and then how much does the customer uh, attribute to the bottom line in your business. So that is the Google side of it. With Facebook, it's not always the same. Um, you know, if you're doing boosted content and remarketing, there's not going to be a direct return on investment for that unless you're sending people to an offer. So I hear people say, hey, Facebook doesn't work. Uh, you know, Instagram doesn't work. It's just because you're not sending people to a specific offer. So if you want a measurable ROI offer, you have to send them to something that's going to make money. You can't just post a picture out there, get tons of likes and say, oh, it doesn't work. It did work, but it was generating awareness. It wasn't generating conversion. So make sure you understand what the marketing funnel is. I created a video here about the three steps of the marketing funnel. You can check it out, but um, make sure that if you want to measure ROI, you have an offer that will generate ROI. That's very, very, very important. But Facebook is great in terms of sending just a specific geographic radius of people who are in the area to your business. So um, the ads and things that you do there, you just have to really create an offer that's going to compel people to go into your business. People are on Facebook and Instagram not because they're looking for a coffee shop, they're looking for content. And so you have to create an irresistible offer that will drive people into the business, but it has to be like an opportunity marketing situation where they're like, hey, this looks like a great opportunity. I'll try it out and see how it goes. So it's different strategies, right? We have intent on Google. We have people hanging out on Facebook. So make sure that you're, you're addressing each one of these markets differently because people are in those different areas for different reasons. And I guess kind of the last tip that I have for you is when you're creating content, and especially if you're doing video content, make sure that you're reposting it across platforms. Make sure that it is natively sized properly to go into these different platforms. And you know, if you are you know, time strapped for creating content and things, just using your phone and actually creating the content natively in the different apps. So in the business manager apps or in Instagram or in YouTube, if you just are, are creating the video directly on your phone, it really helps to cut down on production time, production costs. It doesn't have to be 100% perfectly polished. You're not that huge corporation with the large marketing budget. So don't feel like you have to be. Make it as good as you can, but more content is better in general. People like consistency. They like engaging with people and brands who are consistent. So make sure you're consistent. You know, don't post once a month and then you know never never post again or something do a weekly schedule at least daily is even better and just as much as you can and then engage with people like you're a human because 
it is all too often I see small businesses trying to make themselves look bigger and in turn they kind of lose that humanity that makes them so appealing to so many other businesses. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments and need help with anything, please comment below, happy to help. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a great day.